Greetings friend, entrepreneur, and fellow business builder, marketing master Jim Ackerman here, and this is Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads. The first and only interactive two-way YouTube program designed to help you build your business through building your advertising skills so you can get more customers who will pay you more money more often, the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible. If this is your first visit to the program, let me share with you how it works. Each episode, we present to you an advertising specimen and give you an opportunity to respond to that specimen with your comments, telling us whether you think it's good, bad, or ugly from a marketing perspective and why. Then in the following episode, we show you that same specimen again, and I, the marketing master, give you my take on whether it's good, bad, or ugly, and why. And after you've received my verdict, we let you see the, episode, the, the ad specimen that you will critique for the following week. That way we all get to build our marketing skills together and improve our ability to get bigger responses in our advertising. So, without further ado, let's take a look at last week's specimen once again. This is a number 10 envelope that was bulk mailed it does have a return address on it, and the interesting return address says from the desk of Lavelle Edwards and has the address there. Lavelle Edwards was the Brigham Young University football coach for probably the better part of 30 years and became famous not only in Provo, Utah, where this piece uh, comes from, but also throughout the country. So. The idea was in, in the area around Provo and Salt Lake City, Utah, the name Lavelle Edwards would be one that would be highly recognized and people would likely open the envelope thinking from the desk of Lavelle Edwards, well, what does Lavelle Edwards want to say to me? There's a couple of problems with this envelope, however. One is personal invitation and then it says, inkjetted by the way, James Ackerman or current resident. Well, how personal can that invitation be for a current resident? So there's a little bit of discord there. It's also once again a number 10 envelope which screams out, I am a business piece of mail, not a personal piece of mail. That along with the stamp, the bulk stamp instead of a first class stamp, would dramatically reduce the effectiveness of this uh, envelope even though it has the famous person uh, in the return address. Now, let's open it up and talk about what's on the inside. It's a simple 8.5 by 11 flyer, and you do see Mr. Edwards in the far right-hand side with an endorsement quote that goes along with it that says, I strongly encourage you to call Accurate Hearing. I'm glad I did. They have helped me and my family for years, they can help you as well. Problem, they start with their logo in the upper left hand corner where the eye goes first. It would have been stronger to put Mr. Edwards picture in the upper left hand corner with his quote big across the whole top and not worry about the logo at all. They could have put that down in the lower right hand corner because nobody cares about your logo. Headline, don't miss this opportunity, seating limited to 30. The trouble is there's no benefit there, there's no benefit promise. They are trying to appeal to the idea of scarcity and you not being left out, but they haven't told you what's in it for you yet. The uh, type is one column wide, a big long column wide in sans serif type, all of which is, re is researched to reduce readership. It does have this big splash, wanted 30 people to test the latest in digital hearing aid technology. You and your spouse or family member are invited to attend, free luncheon or dinner seminar for two, and a number of other things associated with it. The problem is, I don't know how many people would get there. That's the stuff that should be toward the top with all this body copy down toward the bottom. Remember, we look at the pictures first, then we look at the big letters, then we look at the little letters. There's not enough benefit in this, the layout is poor, and consequently when you take this and combine with it the problems with the envelope, 
despite the fact that it does use a meaningful celebrity endorser, I'm afraid this effort has to go into the ugly pile. Maybe our next effort will be a little bit better. Let's take a look. So here's another direct mail effort, and let's take a look at this envelope by comparison. This is a uh, number seven invitation size envelope. It is inkjetted. It does have a return address, and it's bulk mail sent. An interesting comparison to the specimen we just looked at. When we open it up, we are opening it up to find a collection of several cards. Wanted 31 people. Does that sound familiar? Similar to our last specimen as well, to try new wireless hearing aid technology. Interesting, a different hearing aid company with a somewhat different approach, although there are similarities. The second card says when and where, five days only, next week only, and tells where they're to be found. There's a third card that says huge savings, and a fourth card that says don't miss this opportunity, and it goes to a fifth card that says we want you to try the same hearing aids Lavelle Trust, and once again Lavelle is on the photograph. In other words, it's really not a different company, it's the same company that Lavelle was advertising last time. Interesting comparison, this effort to the last one. You take a look at all of the different pieces of this puzzle and tell me, is this approach good, bad, or ugly? And how do you compare it against the previous specimen from the same company? You do that and we'll all get some enlightenment that will help us get more customers who will pay us more money more often right here on Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about our program.